Hey guys, welcome back to Lights and Buttons. Today, we're not gonna really have a how-to video, but more of a story time. So a little while back, I was driving on a turnpike and then a car or a truck kicked up a rock and it did make contact with the front of the car. Here's a video clip of that. Now at the time, I could have slammed on my brakes or swerved to try to avoid the rock, but I didn't want to cause a pile up. But anyway, needless to say, I was super pissed at what happened because you try to take such good care of your car and all of a sudden a piece of rock randomly shows up that's a little bit bigger than the size of a golf ball, strikes the front of your car, and then next thing you know when you step out to take a look, even from far away, you can see the damage. I was angry but I decided to make this into a learning opportunity because one thing that I haven't done in the past was to properly touch up paint on the car. In the past, I just took a glob of touch up paint, painted on there and called it a day. It didn't look good, nor did it last. So I looked up some videos, including Chris Fix's recent video that he posted on paint repair, and I found that to be pretty useful. I'll link the videos in the description below. What happened was, I was doing it wrong and I decided that, okay, let's see what are the steps you can do to do like a DIY project at home and have it look decent. Because if you try to take your car into a paint shop and paint a single panel, that in itself can cost you like $700. So I decided to spend a few bucks and try this at home. And here's how it came out. Let's talk about the tools and equipment needed to get this project started. First off, of course, you need the touch up paint pen. This particular pen has an abrasive tip that can smooth away some of the jagged edges. And on the bottom, it also has the clear coat, which is useful for protecting the paint and it gets applied above the paint layer. Some of the touch up paint pens only come with just a touch of paint itself and none of the other two components. So I recommend you get the uh, type that I got um, so that you have all three to work with. Next up, I have some isopropyl alcohol to help prep the surface. Um, and in terms of sanding, I have the 1000 grit sandpaper as well as the 2000, 3000, and 5000 grit sandpaper. And then for me, and this part differs from the Chris Fix video, I'm, I'm not polishing it by hand. I do have a random orbital polisher. So I have um, a pad for the compounding and I have a pad for polishing. So those are two different steps um, at the end to uh, finish the surface. And here are some of the other things I've used for this project. I first started by cleaning the immediate working area. Since it's spring and there's just a ton of pollen everywhere, I didn't clean the rest of the car and I was gonna say that until after the paint job's done. Um, after the immediate area was prepped, I took the abrasive tip of the paint pen and took out some of the jagged edges. So taking it out as much as possible at this step really helps because anything that's sticking up from the impact uh, from the paint, you really want to get that away because at the end, if you leave that in, it's definitely going to be visible. So after that, I followed it up with a thousand grit sandpaper just to continue to smooth out that area and then started to paint. So I took the touch up paint and then in small layers um, and keep in mind, this is replacing the both primer and the paint layers uh, for the car. So I'm working to build up the paint level to match the uh, surface level and then going beyond that so that it forms a slight hump above the rest of the surface and then after that I would take the 1000 grit sandpaper and then sand it down to make it even. If you were just to put a blob of paint, this was my mistake in my other times of painting, it's not going to be even and it's going to look really bad. So this way things will be smoothed out by that sandpaper and then with the sandpaper again, the mistake that I've made while recording was that I didn't wet sand it and I think with wet sanding, it takes a lot of those small particles away from the sandpaper and that way it won't hinder the performance of the, uh, the sanding. So uh, I actually went back and then wet sanded the process from beginning to end and redoing the process just to do it properly. Uh, but in the video clips, you know, in some of them, you won't see me wet sanding, which I wish I did from the start. After you sand it, sometimes you find that a little small chunk of the paint might come off and you might have to repaint the area. Uh, you might have to put in a little bit more of the touch of paint just to fill in the gaps there and then re-sand it with the 1000 grit sandpaper. And I've done this a few times, so for me, it wasn't anything too crazy. I just had to repeat the process a little bit more, spend a little bit more time on it 
but the more prep that you do in the early stages, the better the final product will look. After that's done and you're happy with the surface and it's really smooth, go ahead and add the clear coat. So from the bottom of the touch up paint container, I took out the uh, kind of the foam brush, which in my opinion isn't the best uh, because when I'm spreading out the clear coat, it makes a lot of jagged edges and it's really not smooth. So I'd say be careful, but know that it's not gonna be perfect. And what I did was I added two layers and then sanded it down with the 1000 grit sandpaper. And I spent a lot of time at this stage because in my first run, I went through it and I kind of rushed it through and didn't really get this part perfect. And it looked okay um, before polishing, but after I polished it, any little imperfection will really show up. So at this stage, while you're sanding the clear coat, really make sure that the clear coat is very smooth and that it blends with the rest of the surface, at least as much as possible. After you got that done, you, had, you go through the 1000 grit sandpaper, uh, then you work your way up to 2000 grit, 3000 grit, and then 5000 grit. And what I did was to help blend it around with the surrounding areas, I made um, the sanding area just a little bit bigger every time I step up to a, a higher grit sandpaper. And then after that, I took my random orbital tool and did compounding as well as polishing. And here's what it looks like at the end. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Up close in certain angles it, with high contrasting reflections, you might see a little bit of imperfection. In my opinion, this has turned out great overall. Even though I'm repainting a black exterior, this looks much nicer than before. Standing medium to far away, you won't even notice anything different compared to the rest of the paint. Besides the smoothness, color is also a factor. The car is closing in on being nine years old and the crystal black pearl paint may no longer exactly match the touch-up paint. But that's something you can't control. Maybe next time, I'll experiment with using spray paint, especially with a clear coat. I think that might apply a little bit better, but at this point, I was just okay using the brush. <laughs> Surprisingly, crystal black pearl was also very hard to find. From what I've heard, it's different than the Honda and Acura's Nighthawk Black Pro, which I find readily available from other manufacturers. However, with Crystal Black Pro, I was only able to pick it up in these small containers. And if I had to redo this over again, I might consider using the painter's tape while sanding just to be safe, even though there is a gap between the panels. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully that was an interesting story. Again, this is not really a full how-to video. I'm not a paint expert, this is just a newbie working on a paint job this weekend and trying to show you what it's like going from beginning to end as someone that's never really done this full process before and how it came out. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as always and I'll see you in the next video.